Thank you. Hi. Well, wow. <laughs> very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you for the warm welcome. I appreciate that. Uh, on behalf of, I think, the party, I'd just like to say I think we're very fortunate to have all of our officers and the people here in the Minnesota GOP doing a terrific job for us. But Jennifer, we're lucky to have you especially. And thank you for saying yes. I appreciate that. Shout out to the Carnahan family over there in the 8th District, John and Cindy. Yeah, it's true. In, uh, 19, in uh, 2016, we had 49.6% of the vote, and we came very close to beating that entrenched incumbent walls. But it wasn't meant to be. And in spite of the fact that we wanted to win very badly and we thought, you know, it's an important race, I have to tell you, I woke up that next day a happy person, a happy American. For a simple reason. As important as our race for Congress was in the first district, it wasn't the most important race on the ballot. The most important race was for President of the United States, and thank the good Lord we have Donald J. Trump leading our country. Wow. Think about it, if Hillary Clinton had won that election, she would have stacked the Supreme Court with radicals who would have taken away our basic rights and liberties and invalidated what we believe from this point forward. I guess we would have turned into California. I'm not sure how that would have worked. But we kept fighting for another day, and here we are. With walls out of the race, we now have the best pickup opportunity in the United States for the Republican Party. And our campaigns kept rolling along. We kept working. We raised the most money. We have an unbelievable organization around us led by Dave Fitzsimmons. Anybody ever heard of that guy? David, thank you for what you do. Thank our whole team for what they do. And we've gotten some great support, national, state, local. People like Tom Emmer. Congressman Emmer, thank you for your support. You're a wonderful guy. Rudy Boschwitz, Gil Gutnick, all sorts of icons in the party. Leaders in our district, and most importantly, First District Republicans, as humbled, honored, thank you for your endorsement in Mankato with 76%. Together, we're going to get this done. Now, maybe one of the best things that we have going for us is that uh, we no longer have a candidate in Walls who seemed to understand how to run down there, at least project some things out so he could get reelected. In fact, uh, Tim, when he was leaving, when he was retiring, he he left his uh, successor, hopefully, and not a successor, but the one they want, a memo to, to explain how to get things done. I just happen to have it here. <laughs> it uh, starts out, dear comrade, <laughs> don't forget to cynically take a couple of conservative positions to create plausible deniability that you are not an Obama socialist. Hmm. <laughs> Sincerely, Timothy J. Walls, former member of Congress, Failed candidate for governor, how about that? No. There you go. All right, so the Democrats ended up nominating a guy named Dan Fian. He's further left than Walls. If you can believe this in our district, he supports gun control. He wants to fight the NRA. In a district with the Mayo Clinic in Rochester and all those fine institutions, those rural institutions of medicine, he's for universal health care and socialized medicine. He believes in open borders. He believes in late-term abortion. He believes in the next liberal position to be named later, okay? You know, it's like it's like what Reagan said about Mondale. This guy, Fian, is so far left, he's left America. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're wondering, if you're wondering why the first district Democrats endorsed a person who doesn't fit the district, there's a pretty easy explanation. He's not from the district. He never lived in our first district, the 21 counties, one day in his life until Nancy Pelosi and Obama and the resistance sent him out last year to try to run for Congress when Walls quit. You know, the Democrats, they've done us a great favor. They've created the contrast for us. Usually they try to muddy it up. But in this case, they want to resist the president. They want to replace the president. They want to return us to the failed Obama policies that were rebuked all across our country, not just in the first district. I stand as somebody on the other side. I want to be a conservative reinforcement in the U.S. Republican House. Thank you. To partner, 
to partner with President Trump and like-minded colleagues to keep moving our country in the right direction, to keep us safe with secure borders, protecting us against Islamic supremacists with the refugee timeout that I called for in 2015, <laughs> peace through strength like Ronald Reagan showed us, to make America prosperous, not by transforming America and making us a European socialist state like the Democrats want to do, by transforming the federal government with more tax reform, regulatory reform, work for welfare, U.S. energy independence, merit-based immigration. That's what we stand for. Also, thank you. protecting our God-given rights, the right to life, the right to keep and bear arms, the right to religious freedom. And, and finally, for us, in our rural district, to sustain agriculture and our rural way of life. That's very important to me. I grew up on a farm. I live in a rural community. We're always going to do that. I'd like to be on that agriculture committee as well. Now, this is our time. They say third time's a charm for our campaign because just like John Klein, Colin Peterson, Newt Gingrich, we're going three in a row on the ballot. But it's also third time is a charm for our party, and our conservative movement. This is just the third time in a hundred years that Republicans in Washington have been given all the keys to the cars, the White, the House, the Senate, and the White House. This is the third time really in our lifetimes where we've had a chance, a real chance, to make conservative change. We did it under Ronald Reagan, we did it under Newt Gingrich, and now we have to do it under Donald J. Trump. If we succeed, and we must, we will give our country, our republic, another 20 or 30 years of life, just like President Reagan and Republicans did in the 1980s. That's the grand challenge for the grand old party. And you know what? Together, we're going to get it done. We're going to win our district and win these other seats. We're going to go to Washington and defend our way of life. Folks, we are going to defend America. Thank you. Thank you very much.